How much did your first quad cost? I, I honestly could not tell you. Uh, my first multi-rotor was a flight test electro hub. Let's see if I can pull up flight test electro hub from ready to fly quads. Wow. Wow. That's a, that's a memory. This is the exact kit. Oh my God. This is the exact kit that I bought. I swear to God, this is the exact kit that I bought. I bought it from ready to fly quads, which by the way, don't buy from ready to fly quads. Uh, I don't know if they've changed, but years ago they had terrible, terrible customer service and I would, I would not recommend them. I, I, I don't know. Maybe they've completely changed in the last five years. I wouldn't know. But this is the exact kit I got. It currently is $1 because it's completely out of date. <laughs> but uh, this is, I, I, swear, I think this is the exact, I remember that case. Uh, can we find the frame? Kids these days. Oh, here we go. Here's the old flight test video. Let's see here. Oh my God. So the flight test electro hub was these two pieces, these two PCBs. Uh, this is a power distribution board. You solder your ESCs to these plus and minuses and you get, they've painted them black, but these arms are a uh, half inch poplar wood dowels that you buy from the hardware store and you drill holes through them. And you put M3 screws on them, and, and the, the selling point was that when they break, when they break, you just go to the hardware store and buy new dowels. Yeah, so easy to repair. That was the selling point. This was before everything was carbon fiber. Here's another example of it. Oh, look at that. Look at that GoPro. Yep, there we go. That's a great example of... Uh, now, mine was a quadcopter. Uh, but that is, that was my first, uh, multi-rotor was a quadcopter, something like this. Got good, good freaking times. I had a, uh, I had a Wi-Fi install. I was managing a Wi-Fi install out at Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri. Uh, they were putting Wi-Fi in the barracks and my company was a subcontractor to oversee the install and the design of the wireless network for the barracks. And there was, it was like a month long project. So I, I stayed out there in a hotel for a month, uh, go out, you know, supervise the install, you know, all day. And then I had my, this was when I was first learning to fly FPV and I had my Electra hub with me. I had my goggles with me and I would take it out to a park. Uh, and I would, I would fly laps around the park. And I remember that was really when I cut my teeth learning to fly FPV was during that month. Uh, just just struggling with making left turns and right turns and flying. I wish I had recordings from those days, but I don't. I, I mean, I might have had DVR. I might have had SD card in my goggles. Uh, that was before I was really uploading stuff to my YouTube channel. I had, was, I had uploaded a few little videos, but I wasn't really cruising yet. And uh, I, I distinctly remember making some real sort of leaps forward in my ability to control the quad during that month um, when I didn't have it real, a lot to do. Because if you've been to Fort Leonard Woods, you know there's freaking nothing to do. There's nothing to do while you're out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, actually I brought my family out cause I was gone for a month. They were like, well, we'll fly you home over the weekends. And I was like, yeah, okay. So I can get home at midnight on Friday night, have all of Saturday with my family. And then on Sunday immediately leave and come back. No, thank you. So instead I made a deal where they would bring my family out and my family stayed with me in the hotel for a couple of weeks. And, uh, I mean, it was, I really, my, my wife, uh, uh because she, I would leave and go to work in the morning and then she would be in Fort Leonard Wood with uh with a three-year-old <laughs> and and like they would go over to walmart across the street from the hotel and they would go to the toy section and spend 45 minutes walking around the toy section while he looked at all the toys and then when he started to get bored with that they would buy one like a little cheap toy and then they would go sit outside the walmart on the on the sidewalk in front of the walmart just over by the corner out of the way and he would play with the toy for a little while 
And then they would go back to the hotel room and be like, all right, that's our day. <laughs> oh, that's a good story. Oh, well, I think it's a good story. Good, they're good memories. I have such, I have such good memories. Like, I, in a way, I wish I could go back. Like, it's so cool right now to be a part of FPV and have the amazing technology that we have and the, the culture that we have, uh, you know, around FPV. On some level, I kind of wish I could go back to a simpler time. Not just because FPV was different. It was kind of new and people were discovering things in a way. Everything was so new. The littlest thing that you did was groundbreaking. And now in order to really break ground, it's a lot harder. Not that people aren't breaking ground, but also for me, because I was so inexperienced, everything was so fresh and exciting and interesting. And it's still interesting, but it's not the same. It's not the same when you've been doing it for eight plus years, which now I have. It's a lot harder for me to go, oh, wow, that's so cool. Whereas in the beginning, just everything is so cool. So, all right. Thank you for the opportunity to reminisce.